What I want to go over today is the difference between absolute and relative value in Excel so far as it has to do with autofilling, which is a wonderful feature, but I want to look at a couple of cases in which autofilling doesn't do what is intuitive and how you can change that. Well, autofilling, as you're probably familiar, is something that will take values in a cell and interpret what it thinks the next values are going to be in subsequent cells, whether it's left to right or top to bottom. Here we have two ones, so the next two are naturally going to be ones as well. A sequentially increased number, a number that sequentially increases by one, three and four are the next values. Even something where, say, counting by twos here, it understands the next two values are naturally six and eight. And even when you do alphanumeric characters here, a1, a2, it understands the most likely result of autofilling for the next couple things is going to be a3 and a4. But here's where we come across the problem. We have aa1 and ab1. So a normal person would assume, well, the next one should be ac1 and then ad1. But Excel thinks differently. It puts it as aa2 and ab2. So essentially it takes the thing that in the top two cells didn't change and then changes them. Instead of looking at the one thing that changed and interpreting that as the thing that it should in subsequent autofill cells change as well. That has directly to do with relative and absolute values. Here's a real world example down here. Let's say that you work for a company that has computer parts and multiple editions of each one. So there are multiple different printers, monitors, chairs, and desktops with their own unique price. So in this case, price is the variable. Everything else is, as an economist would say, ceteris paribus, all other things being equal. So that is shipping at 4.5% of the price and the handling fees of $2.99 and the transaction fee of $2.99. Those are always going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is the price. So what does that mean in the formula? Well under here, under total cost, we see the formula and that is B16, which is the price, plus the price times the shipping fee in addition to the handling fee and transaction fee. Well if we go down here in autofill, we shouldn't really expect it to work and we can tell that it hasn't because monitor is the same price as the total cost. We know that isn't right. But what exactly happened? Up here we look again and we see that everything increased by an increment of 1. B16 became 17. ABC22 became 23. Well, we don't want that because down here we see that we want to keep shipping, handling, transaction fee, the things that stay the same, in the same cells. It makes sense. So you might ask yourself, well, why would it work if it only has one thing to go by? Perhaps, as in other autofill situations, if I have two things to reference, Excel will figure out which one it's supposed to change. Well, let's test that out. So we're going to go here and copy the formula and paste the formula right below with the only difference being which item we're talking about. So all the 16s become 17s. And that's the only thing that's going to change because A22, B22, and C22, the things that stay the same, we want to stay the same. So now we see that the, here's the correct total cost. So you'd think that if you take both of these and autofill, then that would be the correct cost. But again, we see, no, it isn't. We know it's not correct because the same price, total cost won't, e won't equal price. So something must be wrong. So we go, and again, we see via the formula bar, that, the, that everything is still changed by an increment of 1. So Excel simply isn't understanding what needs to stay the same. So what we can do here is apply what's called an absolute value instead of a relative value to the things we want to stay the same and maintain a relative value to the things that we want to change. Now what's the difference? Well when you're looking at it, an absolute value and if you've done any formulas you've probably seen this looks something like this that is it has a dollar sign before both the column and the row and a relative value would simply have the column and the row 
So let's go back to the formula here and say, well, the thing that we want to change is what is in column B, the price. So we're going to leave that alone. But we want everything in row 22, that is shipping, handling, and transactions, to say the same. So let's put dollar symbols in there to make this an absolute value instead of a relative value. We hit enter and the price stays the same, the total cost stays the same. But now when we autofill, we see that everything fills in appropriately now, the only variable being price. So that is a good time when using autofill it's beneficial to make everything absolute except for the one thing that you want to change and you leave that relative. Let's consider one other case where it's the other way around however and that is most often where I see it at least is when you're referencing a value in another workbook. So let's say that for whatever reason we want this cell to equal the value from another workbook. Now we see up here the value equals on workbook 4 sheet 1 a3. Well you can see here with the dollar symbols that this is an absolute value. So when we go to autofill you might expect it to contain the values from the other workbook all the way down the line but no it puts the same value in it instead of these different values here. So how can we change that? Well in this case we take away the absolute and make it relative. Take away the dollar symbols and then use autofill again and you see that now it corresponds with all those values in the other workbook and autofills as you as you might expect it to and that is the next cell down containing what the other workbook has as the next cell down not simply repeating the same value so here's just two examples of how absolute and relative values in Excel can be used to maximize your use of autofill